There are multiple ways to send events to EventBridge, and in this video I'm going to show you three different ways. It's useful to be able to create events for testing rules and debugging workloads, but you also need ways for microservices to put events on event buses in your production applications. I'll show you how to do this in the EventBridge console, the AWS CLI, and also the AWS SDK. So we can test each case. I've already created a rule that looks for a source of my custom application, and it'll output any of those matching events to CloudWatch logs, so that we can see when we send the events that they've been successfully delivered to the bus, and they can be output to a log, and we can view the result. So first of all, in the EventBridge console, in the Event Buses menu on the left, you'll see a button in the top right that says Send Events. Now this is the easiest way to do this if you just want to send a test event. So in this video, I'll be using the default event bus. I'm going to test with a source of my custom application because that's what the rule matches. I'll put a detail type of message. Now in event detail, you have to provide a JSON structure, which can be anything you like for your application. So I'm just going to say message, hello world. And then once we've got this, I'll click on the send button at the bottom. And that's now sent the event. Now, over in the CloudWatch logs where our rule is logging out these events, I'll just open this and you can see that one message has arrived and it shows the event. Now, you'll see that this is a bit different to the event I created because there's an envelope of different attributes that are included too. So it includes the account number, the time, the region and so forth. That's typically what your application can expect to receive. So in the console, you can choose to resend that same event just by clicking resend. And every time you do this, you'll see the events arriving in the CloudWatch log just there. You can also edit this and make changes. And you can also optionally send multiple events at the same time. If you hit duplicate, we can say hello world two and send that. And that will then send two events, one with the first message and one with the second. So sending it through the console is, is really the simplest way of sending events in an ad hoc way for testing directly onto your default bus or any bus that you choose. So the second way I'm going to show you is using the CLI. Now you may have the AWS CLI installed on your local machine. If you need instructions on how to do that, that's listed here at the website where you can download and install it locally for whichever operating system you're running. Optionally, you can also use Cloud Shell. So to launch Cloud Shell, you'll see a button up in the toolbar just here. And if you click on that, it'll launch the Cloud Shell application. This is a free interface that's provided by AWS in most regions now. And it just takes a few minutes to start, but this includes an environment where the CLI is already installed. Once Cloud Shell starts, you can run any typical Linux commands here. So what I'm going to do to start with is just install nano as our text editor, just to make text editing a little bit easier. Once that's installed, then we're going to create a file with the event in it. I'll call it event.json. Just save this file so we've got event.json containing the events that we want to send. So I can use the CLI to now put the events onto the event bus. I just use this syntax to specify the local file. And once the it's been put onto the bus, you get this response back indicating an event ID for any events that were successfully put onto the bus and a failed entry count if any of the events were failed to put onto the, onto the bus. And once again, now I've pushed, pushed that event into the bus, you'll be able to see over in my CloudWatch logs, we've got a new log that has appeared with this event that's been sent. The third way to do this is with the SDK. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. So again, sticking with the Cloud Shell console, I can install the AWS SDK as an NPM package, and we're going to use Node to be able to send events to the bus. Once this is complete, I'm going to create a text file called putevents.js. And I already have some code here. I'm just going to copy across. And what this does is it uses, this is Node.js, so it's requiring the AWS SDK. We're setting up an event bridge service, and then we're calling putevents 
using this JSON params object. It's the same params object we created with the CLI. And the important thing if you're using Node.js, you can use await async syntax here to await the put onto the bus and then log the result out here. So what I'll do just here is I'll just call put events at the end of this. We'll save this script. And then from the console, I just type in put events.js. And it's the same response. You get a, an event ID for successful events and a failed entry count for any that are unsuccessful. You can also do the same thing from Lambda. So I'm going to show you that too, where we go to the Lambda service in the console. Now we're going to create a new function and call this send events. And again, we're going to use Node.js and create the function. So we don't need the boilerplate here, but what we're going to do is just put that same code that you saw earlier where we define that we need to use the SDK and set up the event bridge service. And then in the Lambda handler, we're going to put the code that we saw earlier in here where it sets up the params object with this hello world message. And then it's going to put this to the event bridge bus. Now in Lambda, we have to also make sure that the service has access to event bridge to be able to put events onto the bus so if i go to configuration and permissions i can open up the role that the lambda function is using so i don't want to over permission this i'm just going to say event bridge we want this to have the ability to put events onto the bus What I can do is find the ARN for the default bus, which is what we've been using in this example. You may be using a custom bus in your code, so you can use a different ARN there. So I'm going to specify here, we're restricting that to that, and then we're going to review the policy. I'm going to call this put events policy, create that policy. Okay, now that has now been attached to the Lambda role. So back over in the Lambda function, what we can do is now test this code. So first I'll hit test. It doesn't actually matter what the test event looks like because we're not using it in this case. So we'll just call that test and then click test. And the same thing, you get the same response here that the it shows the event ID for events that have been successfully put on the bus and a failed entry count of zero. That might be different if you're putting more than one event, so it's worth watching that response. But that is how you would use the SDK from the Lambda function. So those are three different ways that you can put events onto the bus in EventBridge. To learn more about events and using Amazon EventBridge, visit s12d.com forward slash about events.